Hello, everyone. Uh, it's really great to see so many people here. Uh, when you go home tonight, you'll remember that uh, you saw Robert Boval, Graham Hancock, and then some guy. <laughs> um, my, uh, my field of study is uh, comparative cosmology. You might see in some of the CPAC literature that I'm described as a Dogen cosmologist. And I want to just make it clear that that does not mean that I do the hair, nails, and makeup for an obscure African tribe. <laughs> um, co cosmology is the study of um, how the universe was created. And what I do is I look at ancient cosmologies of different cultures and compare their symbols and their myths, their deities, and their cosmological words and try to make sense, better sense, of what the ancients were talking about through those comparisons. Uh, what I'm here for today is to talk to you about an alternate method of reading Egyptian hieroglyphs. Um, if you recall, back in 1822, our traditional method of reading hieroglyphs came out of a translation of the Rosetta Stone. There were three parallel texts, um, one written in Egyptian hieroglyphs, one written in Demotic, and one in Ancient Greek. And Champollion, building on the work of other people like Thomas Young, uh, was able to, to compare groupings of Egyptian glyphs to words that we understood in the other languages and produce a translation that was based on word equivalences. Um, my approach is not based on uh, parallel texts. It's based on symbols and meanings that come out of three parallel cosmologies. And what my studies have shown is that a lot of the Egyptian hieroglyphic shapes and meanings seem to evol have evolved out of a cosmology that existed before written language. And so what I'm going to do today is uh, try to walk, us, walk you all through how one of these Egyptian glyph shapes is evoked along with its traditional meanings in the cosmologies, and then show how those meanings play out in various Egyptian words. Um, I, it is not my intention to say that the traditional translations of the Egyptian hieroglyphs are wrong. Um, if I were to characterize the difference between the two approaches, I'd have to say that the traditional approach tells us what an Egyptian word means. Uh, the alternate approach tells us why the word means what it means. OK, uh, my discussion today is based on um, concepts that are expressed more fully in my two books, The Science of the Dogon and Sacred Symbols of the Dogon, uh, both of which are available in the bookstore, the CPAC bookstore. Uh, the second book is available for the first time today, thanks to a sort of Herculean, Herculean effort on the part of the publisher and the CPAC people to get the books here. They had to be shipped directly from the printer to CPAC to be here on time. I actually saw the book for the first time this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get to a position where I can see the slides here. Um, OK, the Dogen, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with them, are an African tribe, a modern day African tribe, um, who live in northwest Africa, in Mali, just below um, Algeria and Morocco. They're a cliff dwelling people who live in the desert. And outwardly, they, they are very primitive. They don't have technology. Uh, they have. Um, withstood assimilation to other cultures for many, many, many years. Um, let's see. Uh, the, part of the reason why the Dogen are important is because they share many um, things in common with ancient Egypt. They have cultural um, similarities to ancient Egypt and religious similarities to um, Judaism. And they have um, cosmological similarities to ancient Buddhism. So they represent sort of a crossroads of three different traditions. Seems like a pretty good place to start um, to explore cosmology. Um, another big advantage of studying the Dogen is that while you can't sit an Egyptian priest down and ask him questions about his religion, you can sit a uh, Dogen priest down and ask him questions and get straight answers. Um, so we, we know, we have documented directly out of the mouths of Egyptian priests um, what their symbols mean, what their cosmological words mean, and a lot of their, a lot of their myths and their symbols line up with ancient Egypt. 
Um, there are many, many reasons to think that there is a connection between the Dogon and ancient Egypt. Uh, no one has actually proved, has, no one's been able to actually demonstrate that the Dogon evolved from the Egyptians. But as we look at uh, examples of things they have in common, it becomes apparent that the Dogon seem to have been connected to Egypt sometime very, very early in ancient Egy Egyptian history. Uh, for example, the Dogon have, um, where, where the Egyptians have um, gods who emerge in pairs, the Dogon have ancestors who emerge in pairs with the same attributes. Uh, they haven't risen to the level of actual god status yet. Uh, where the Egyptians have written symbols, the Dogon have cosmological drawings that take many of the same shapes, carry many of the same meanings. And so it's as if the Dogon system of cosmological drawings um, existed before the emergence of written language in Egypt. The Dogon have no written language. Um, the Dogon also have um, many similarities that we would expect to see with pre-dynastic tribes. Um, if, if they really were connected with Egypt very early on, then we should see, we should be able to predict certain things about the pre-dynastic tribes based on what we see among the Dogon. Uh, Helene Hagen wrote a book called The Shining Ones, which documents um, important uh, cosmological words as they existed among the Amazigi, who are the uh, grouping of pre-dynastic hunter tribes. Um, she traces symbols and words to ancient Egypt, uh, many of the same symbols and words that I look at in terms of the Dogon. Um, Okay, um, one of the things that drew me to the Dogon is the fact that they, their cosmology is preserved in very great detail. And what their priests say is that the Dogon cosmology tells us how their tribal god created matter. Now what no one happened to notice along the way was that what the Dogon are describing and what they diagram is the real structure of matter. Uh, it took me... <laughs> It took me uh, years of research because I didn't know that much about the scientific structure of matter, but I knew enough to recognize an atom and a, a proton, an electron, a neutron, and so forth. And I realized that the Dogen had these top-level symbols of matter right. And so I asked the question, is it possible that the, the, the further descriptions they give of matter could also be right? And when you, um, when you look at their descriptions, their drawings, my first book lays a foundation side by side, Dogen descriptions and drawings next to descriptions from Stephen Hawking and Brian Greene and scientific diagrams that come from atomic theory, quantum theory, and string theory. And the Dogen have the structure completely right, top to bottom. Um, when it comes down to the level of string theory, I should probably say that the comparison is really probably more exact to something called torsion theory. Um, which John Deering could probably tell us about. Um, it's very similar to string theory, but has some differences. Okay, now, in, in addition to describing these components of matter in their mythological structure of matter, the Dogen um, typically provide us with a supporting drawing. And when they get down to the level of, a, of what would be an electron, the drawing they give us, which they say is a picture of a nest, looks almost exactly like an electron microscope picture of an electron orbit, orbital shape in science. And this is the, the kind of, of correlation in, um, in symbols that we find fairly typically. Um, very, very strong, very easy to recognize. There was no attempt to hide anything. It's not like the symbols have been disguised. They're just sitting right out there for somebody to look at and see. Okay, many of the Dogen shapes that are these cosmological drawings uh, also take the same shape as Egyptian hieroglyphs. And so when I finished writing the first book, I realized that the Dogen had provided me with 30 glyph shapes or 30 cosmological shapes that looked an awful lot like Egyptian shapes. And in many cases, carried the same meanings as the Egyptian shapes or turned up written in Egyptian words that had the same meaning as the Dogen cosmological word. Like if you go to the Egyptian word,